dear dear friends in this video i am going to discuss the behavioral model of sayat and march the behavioral theories of the firm started developing in the early 1950s zaiman's article titled a behavioral model of rational choice which was published in the quarterly journal of economics in 1955 made an impact on the theories of the firm which were existing in those days the behavioral model of rational the behavioral model of the firm or the theories of the firm has been elaborated later on by two major economists sayat and march we will develop the model in the following sequence the firm is a coalition of groups with conflicting goals so in sayat and march model we consider firm not as a single goal unit in the traditional theory firm is a single goal unit but here the firm is considered as a multi goal unit because the firm is a coalition of different groups like managers workers shareholders customers suppliers bankers tax inspectors and so on the firm is a coalition of different groups with conflicting goals the concept of the aspiration level the demands of the different groups are competing for the given resources of the firm so we have different groups and they are competing for the given resources of the firm different groups bargain continuously to achieve their demands demands take the form of the aspiration levels demands change continuously depending on past achievements and on changes in the firms and its environment what are the goals of the firm the goal of the firm is satisfying behavior the firm does not want it to maximize anything it wants just to satisfy it wants to satisfy the following five important goals production goal inventory goal sales goal share of the market goal profit goal the firm is a satisfying organization rather than a maximizing entrepreneur the management wishes to attain a satisfactory level of production to attain a satisfactory share of the market to earn a satisfactory level of profit to divert a satisfactory percentage of their total receipts to the research and development or to advertising to acquire a satisfactory public image and so on so the firm's intention is to satisfy the aspiration levels of people aspiration levels of different groups the firm does not want it to maximize simon introduced the concept of bounded rationality to justify the sides behavior of the firms bounded rationality simply means limited uh, rationality rationality is limited and firms to examine only a small number of alternatives and choose the best that means the managers acts with bounded rationality traditional theory defined the rational firm as the firm that maximizes profit but the behavioral school postulates a satisfying behavior of the means for solution of the conflict do not make the firm unstable we know that different types of people are there different groups of people are there they are conflict there each one's goal is conflicting with one another but although there exists conflict of goals these conflicts do not make the firm unstable the reasons for this observed stability are groups have limited time therefore they cannot pursue their goal for a long period of time groups have initially agreed goals they might to have entered into an initial agreement with the firm. so therefore they cannot pressurize the firm to uh, satisfy or to meet their goals after a particular level thirdly there is delegation of function in the firm which reduces the source of conflict
Now, the following are some of the important means for the resolution of the conflict. So if a conflict arises, how will we solve it? First is money payments. You can give more remuneration to persons to solve their issues. Workers get their salaries and wages. Shareholders get their dividends. Side payments or policy commitments. Side payments are policy commitments by the managers to employees, which do not go into the pocket of the employees directly. For example, research assistance due to the scientists to engage in research and development activities. Slack payments. Slack payment is defined as payments to the various groups of the coalition over and above those required for the efficient working of the firm. Sequential attention to demands. Top management's sequential attention to the demands of the various groups is also a source of resolution. Decentralization of decision making. Top management delegates the authority to, to take decisions to more sections. The process of decision making. We will distinguish two levels of decision making. One is the level of decision making at the top management level. Second, decision making at lower levels of administration. Decisions at the level of top management. Top management allocates the budget based on projects submitted by various departments. Projects are examined on the basis of millions. Two criteria set for the evaluation of projects. One is budgetary constraint. Second, whether this budget or whether this allocation will make an improvement in, in the activities of the firm or not. That is improvement criteria. Now, decisions at lower levels of administration. How are these decisions taken? The decision process at this level involves various degrees of freedom of action. So each and every department has got their own, its own freedom of action. Once the budget shares are allocated, each manager has the discretion in spending the fund. But final price decisions are usually taken at the top management. The staff at low level, lower levels learn by the mistakes and success of the past. Therefore, we say that the firm, the whole firm is, is an adaptively rational system. And Uncertainty and the environment of the firm. There are two types of uncertainty. One is market uncertainty. That is uncertainty coming out of changes in the, or due to changes in how the competitor will react. So a firm doesn't know how the competitor will react to his decisions. But model of the process market by each sections but the steps may be outlined as follows one is th these are the turning And second is forecast of firm's demand. Third is estimate the cost. Fourth, specify the goal of the firm. Fifth, evaluate the results. So we are comparing the results with our goals. If you feel that your goal is not achieved, and if goals are not attained, then re-examine the cost estimation. Then again, evaluate your new solution by comparing it to goals. If you are not satisfied, that means if your goals are not attained, then again, re-examine this, the demand estimation. Then evaluate your new solution by comparing it to goals. If goals are not then met, then try to readjust downwards its aspiration levels. So by following these 10 steps, 
in a in a firm uh, the managers they try to attain their goals their aspirations a comparison with the traditional theory now we just make a comparison with the traditional theory a firm is in, a firm in the behavioral theory is a coalition of groups with large with large and conflicting members but in traditional theory there is only one underpinning there is no division uh, there is no coalition of different groups having different uh, interest as far as the traditional theory is concerned but here we have different groups with the different interest the firm of the traditional theory has only one goal but here we you have a number of goals you will have a number of a number of goals equal to the number of the conflicting groups if you have 10 conflicting groups then you have 10 goals not only one goal the behavior theory recognizes that the model of corporate business has multiplicity of goals behavior theory introduces the concept of bound and unlimited rationality but in traditional theory there is global rationality or you can say there is rationality but here we have the bound and rationality or limited rationality unlike the traditional theory side and marx distinguish two sources of uncertainty so here in traditional theory we hardly find any source of uncertainty but here we have two sources of uncertainty one is uncertainty arising from changes in market conditions second is uncertainty arising from competitors behavior so with this we end uh, this discussion on uh,